In order to protect its borders, the Roman Empire built strong systems of fortifications across its empire. These were not limited to its border regions though, like the Limes at the Rhine, or Danube, or Hadrian's Wall in Britain. One such defensive complex was built at the northeastern edge of Italy, and it would play an important role in the civil wars and the great migrations towards the end of the Western Roman Empire. This system ran from the Bay of Quarner in the Adriatic all the way to Carinthia in the north, and it is from here that the defense system gets the name that is most commonly known by today. Claustra Alpium Iuliarium, or Barrier of Julian Alps, already called so by a Roman historian, Amianus Marcellinus, though it would have other designations as well. The claustra snaked across uneven terrain of hills, valleys and forests for roughly 170 kilometers, though experts today are of different opinions how far north the defensive system actually stretched and from where on a new defensive system started. What is certain is that Claustra consisted of an interrupted system of walls, towers and forts of different sizes, contrary to the long prevailing opinion that it was another case of a continuous wall, like that of Hadrian. These defensive barriers controlled and restricted access into Italy and the heart of the Roman Empire from the east along both major and local roads as well as highland passes. The most important road, built already in the time of Augustus, led from Aquileia towards Imona and gave the easiest access to and from Italy and Pannonia and the Danube River. While individual objects like postal and custom stations scattered along the way already then, the construction of the defensive works and barrier walls started towards the end of the 3rd century, with the most of the complex completed in a single campaign in the early 4th century. The documented lengths of the barriers range from a few meters to several kilometers. They were constructed in a way to close valleys and ridges that the Roman road and pathways followed, making the most of natural features. The wall's course had been strategically adjusted to the way the terrain is laid out, positioned on terrace edges and running in front of hilltops. The Claustra Alpium Iuliarium system kept watch over the Roman roads above all else. It was made up of numerous fortified towers and defensive walls built from the local limestone and lime mortar, most probably by Roman soldiers. The walls were reinforced with large passages or gate towers, additionally expanded into a fortlet or a fort at the most vulnerable and important locations. Typically the defensive walls were between 1 and 2 meters wide, while the forts could have additional protection of up to 3 meters. The walls are thought to be 2 to 4.5 meters high and were built upon bedrock outcroppings or on the ground's organic loam. Because a meter wide wall was too narrow for soldiers to move along its top, supports in the form of shorter stone walls butting up against the defended side of the main barrier wall were built at certain locations. It is believed that their main function was to support a wooden platform that soldiers could move along, rather than the stone wall itself. Such support structures were not necessary for walls that were 2 meters wide. The placement of towers, as well as to some extent their shape and size, were always adjusted to the path of the defensive wall and topography. When building and spacing the towers, it was important to consider a change in the wall's direction and size, a good vantage point, and to a lesser extent the capacity to see another tower or watch point. Most of the time the towers were constructed so that they stuck out on the defended side of the barrier wall and were rarely constructed so they protruded equally from both sides. The average surface of the rectangular towers stretched between 4x4 to 6x6 meters. In the entire defensive system, the Ad Pirum fort was probably the most heavily fortified location and the centerpiece of the entire system. It was located at the highest point of the Hrushitsa Plateau, along the path of the Roman public road connecting Imona and Aquileia. At first, a road station was located here, and in the second half of the 3rd century, the hamlet was fortified with thick walls that followed the uneven hilly terrain. It encompassed an area 250 meters long and 75 meters wide. We can infer from the writings that the Claustra Alpium Iuliarium system served a defensive and, more successfully, a monitoring function. It was an internal barrier for controlling the flow of goods and people into and out of Italy, as opposed to the border frontiers at the edge of the Roman Empire that acted as a barrier against an outside force. 
it did not completely seal the lines of communication into Italy and, just like the Hadrian's Wall, it wasn't meant to be an impregnable barrier to send back invading armies, but rather to be a speed bump for the invaders in order for Italy to put together a better defense and an opposing force. The Claustra took part in multiple internal conflicts from towards the end of the crisis of the 3rd century and the era of Tetrarchies, from Diocletian to Constantine. But the defensive aspect is where the Claustra ultimately fell short. Ancient writers describe how armies of self-proclaimed emperors and usurpers passed the region of the barrier without major problems, as did later barbaric incursions. In later years, this was more a consequence of poorly manned walls and forts, which further stemmed from the declining economic power of the Roman state. Early in the 5th century, Claustra lost all sense of purpose and started to deteriorate due to lack of upkeep. Apart from the individual forts and towns of Tarsatica and Castra, which probably also served as logistical hubs, there were little to no artifacts found at the defensive walls and towers, suggesting that the army was never likely stationed here permanently. Today what remains of these defensive systems are stone bases of walls and towers, some well preserved or reconstructed, while others hide under layers of leaves, twigs and moss under an uneven forest ground. Despite that, the Claustra influenced all passing people, from commoners and traders to marching armies that moved past these regions, and is now of utmost significance from a cultural and archaeological perspective and in understanding the later years of the Roman Empire. If you want to learn about how the Roman Empire almost crumbled two centuries earlier than it did, watch the next video about the crisis of the 3rd century, or click the link in the description below. Be sure to like, subscribe, you know how YouTube works, and I will bring you more history soon.